E iniciamos a nossa programação na Arena Laranja com as palavras de Lisa Galo, vice-presidente global de desenvolvimento de produtos e processos, marcas estratégicas e serviços operacionais da Avon. Ela nos traz sua visão desse mercado tão competitivo e inovador onde a Avon atua. Por favor, Lisa, venha ao palco. Thank you, obrigada. So I'll be speaking English, I hope that's okay. Um, let me get started here. So thanks for having me. Um, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about innovation and give you a, both a global and local perspective. And uh, you know, I'm based out of New York, but very happy to be here in Brazil, my uh, most favorite country. So to start, I think the first thing we have, we have to do is say, what does science have to do with beauty? Many people don't realize the amount of science that actually goes into to beauty. They're very surprised. And the truth is that very hard science goes into beauty. For example, in skincare, we have a lot of biological science. And in color cosmetics, a lot of physical science. And you might ask yourself, why is innovation important in the first place? Why do we innovate? Why do beauty companies continue to innovate? There's so many products out there. Well, the reason why that we innovate is because our consumers, our, our customers, are very demanding. Good? Okay. That better? Um, they're constantly evolving. They're, their tastes are changing. And they're really looking for high-performing products. And that's why we continue to innovate as beauty companies. They're looking for benefits that they've never seen before in the past. And again, they become very, very demanding. Perhaps more important than all the available products are the gaps that exist. And it's hard to believe that there's actually gaps that exist in performance and beauty products. But they are, and it's really what she wants, what she needs. Maybe it's delivering on a current trend. But those gaps are really what represents our ability to discover new performance areas. So how, do, how does Avon define and practice innovation? These puzzle pieces that I'm, I'm, I'm putting out there will all come together for you, hopefully, at the end of this presentation. But in our research and development work, we define innovation as a change to a product, an upgrade to a product, a brand new product, or simply using an existing technology to go into a new benefit space. And when you really break innovation down into its most basic parts, there's three parts. One is the technology. Second is our ability to interpret trends, which is very important. And third, and the most important aspect, is our consumer. So from a technology point of view, The research and work of our scientists and our partnerships with top universities and industry leaders keep us right on the cutting edge. Interpreting trends, and I'll get into each aspect of this, is critical because it's really important that what we come out with is relevant to the consumer and on trend, especially being a beauty company. And we looked, we looked for trends in other industries, we look for trends culturally, and we look for trends societally. So we look in all different places from trends that are macro to micro trends, and we consider those in all of our new product development. But as I mentioned, the third and most important aspect is the consumer. Without consumer insights and tensions, we really can't develop new products because those are really at the core of what she's asking us for and what she's asking for us to develop. And the consumer for Avon includes our representative. She's really our first consumer. If our representative doesn't like a product or see the relevancy in it, she's not going to be able to sell it to her customer. So that's a critical aspect of, of our development in these puzzle pieces, which I'll talk through. It's critical that we listen to her, and it's critical that we, we speak to her in a way that she's actually telling us what she wants, but she is 
not telling us what she wants. We call that an unarticulated need. And what that means is we have a conversation with her. And an example of this would be um, we had um, a, a time where we went into consumers' homes and we actually asked them to empty their makeup bag out. And they emptied out their makeup bag and to our surprise, there was no lipstick in the makeup bag. And we thought to ourselves, hmm, why wouldn't there be a lipstick in the makeup bag? That doesn't make any sense. But what she told us was that her lipstick is always with her in the car, in her pocketbook, in her cabinet. And so she's always reaching for it when she's out. So we actually developed a unique lipstick that, had one, that was one-handed. So she didn't have to take the cap off because she's always on the go when she uses her lipstick. Now, she would never have asked us for that. But when we developed it, because we listened to her, she, she loved it and she wanted it. It was one of our highest selling lipsticks ever. So that's an unarticulated need. The other piece of the puzzle, the key pieces, is really to make that product interesting and relevant. So we use tools like ideation, and that's really where we come up with a product idea. And then we use tools such as storytelling. And storytelling really allows us to come out with a relevant new way to talk to her about the product. And then we also must, especially in our channel, do what we call demos or demonstrations. And I'm gonna give you examples of all of these different things as I talk through the presentation. But what's critical is that we are able to show her the unique area of product performance that we've developed. And that's what we call a demonstration. So what is our trend approach? We look across multiple fronts. We look at future trends, consumer trends, emerging beauty trends, mainstream beauty trends, and adjacent beauty trends. These five trends areas are very important and very different, and they lead us to very different innovations. First, future trends. These are leading edge technologies science and trends that are going to shape our future out up to 10 years out. So imagine a, a magic wand to put your makeup on. But we, we do look at those because they are very important and they shape the future of the beauty industry. We've got many products that we looked at you know, 10 years ago that are coming to, to market now. So these trends help us build our future pipeline. Consumer trends. An example of a consumer trend are you know, your Fitbit, your smartwatches, fitness trackers. That's a very important consumer trend. So you might think about how, in fact, does that trend resonate to the, um, to, to the cosmetic arena? Well, there's a very important trend of athleisure. I'm not sure if it's come to Brazil yet, but it's a very popular trend. Um, and basically, it's about women who are wearing makeup to the gym now. They're wearing their gym clothes out. It's a, it's a very unique trend, and that all stems from how the consumers are, are um, answering to this, this particular area. Then emerging beauty trends, and these are trends we're just starting to see, beginning uh, where we an anticipate two to three years out, and we start to think about that. And on the next slide, what I'll do is I'll talk through some of those, um, those important thoughts and trends. Then mainstream beauty trends, those are really important and they're about you know, 12 to 18 months out. So if you think about it, I'm gonna talk to you about our ultra matte lipstick and we have a booth out there where we're, we're actually making it. But that was a mainstream trend that we identified over two years ago and now it's out on the market. And there's mainstream trends now that we're working on that will come out in the next 12 to 18 months. And then adjacent industry trends. We often find trends from other industries, um, you know, offering an interesting, again, product, product performance attribute. And one, one, one important one that I'd like to explain to you is there was, um, it, it, and it was really for inspiration, Lotus Technology. It's a technology that some, some clothing companies were using that would waterproof clothing. And the whole purpose or the reason behind lotus technology is what happens is there's a microstructure on a lotus leaf. And if you know anything about that, water just balls up and rolls off of it. It actually picks up the dirt off the leaf and, and cleans it. It's called self-cleaning technology. What we did was we thought about that and we thought, where could we use a technology like that? We thought hair care. Why would that be important in hair care? Well, it would, re it would keep water out, and it would, in fact, prevent frizz. 
So what we did was we actually mimicked the microstructure of the lotus leaf so that when she put the treatment on her hair, it repelled water. And we got performance, none like before, to actually keep frizz out for over three days, which was important. And those are some of the inspirations we get from adjacent industries. So <clears throat> major trends that we've brought to life on time. I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about extreme finishes. Uh, it's a very important trend, and, and it, it's been our biggest lipstick launch in our history of Avon. I'll also talk a little bit about East continues to take on West, but some of the other important trends that are being brought to life are facial shaping, contouring, illuminating, non-touring, and um, bare perfection. What's really interesting, though, and I'm going to talk a bit about bringing that local perspective in, is we know in Brazil that the Brazilian consumer really wants a matte finish on everything. So this illumination or this trend is going to be very, we need to think hard about how we'd bring that trend to Brazil because it's not something that's real obvious, but these are important considerations that we do in our development process. So those are the two that I'll be spending a little bit more time on. And first one that I want to talk about, and, and what's really important for all of you to know, is that 80% of trends and consumer needs are global. They're, they're common across all women, across all countries. 20% of those are local and more relevant to a specific country. So for us, it's extremely important that we pay close attention to that because that's really what sets, sets us apart and makes us more relevant. And in Brazil, we pay an awful lot of attention to that because Brazil is our number one market. So this is a new product that we're launching. And what's very interesting is that globally, women want hydration, women want moisturization. It's important, it's a, it's a very important anti-aging benefit. But to bring this to Brazil, we really had to think hard because even though the Brazilian consumer wants to be hydrated and moisturized, she's afraid that it's gonna make her face and her skin oily and greasy. So many times the Brazilian consumer won't even moisturize during the day because she's concerned that her skin is not gonna, her skin condition is gonna be bad and she's gonna, she's gonna look shiny. So what we did was we developed this product, again borrowing, from East, China, Asia, Korea, very, you know, K-Beauty's huge right now, especially for skincare, on these, these hydrating masks. And to the Brazilian consumer, what we explained is that she's going to get her hydration because she's going to put this on at night. She's going to sleep with it, and she's going wake to wake up with hydrated skin, right? So that's a very different way to talk about it, but it was very relevant for the Brazilian consumer because if we didn't speak about it in a way that made sense to her, she wouldn't, she wouldn't want to use this product, may not even understand what an overnight hydrating mask is. And we do that by going out and, and, and actually giving the product to consumers and, and then repeating back to us what, you know, what they think about it. So it's very important to make it locally relevant. So I talked a little bit about her and the consumer, and it all starts with her. And what we do is we call this consumer-centric innovation. If it doesn't matter to the consumer, it's not worth working on. In my career, I've worked for Avon for 23 years. I'm a chemist by background, so I've been on the bench making products. I've come up with some amazing technology but it didn't deliver what was important to her. And there have been product failures because of that. So it's critical that you start with the consumer need, you find a solution, that's your discovery, then you find the technology that will deliver on that that leads to the product. And that's really what we call consumer-centric innovation. As part of that, we also think it's important that the entire product speaks to that innovation. And as I go through the matte lipstick example, I'll tell you more about how we brought that to life. So 
So, again, you know, how do we know we're giving her something she wants? You know, we work towards understanding our consumers. And because of that, we go out to the various markets and speak to them to learn what their tensions are, what their desires are. We spend many, many hours, countless hours, al analyzing the data. We do research to find the ideas, then we do research on the ideas. And a really good example of that, if any of you are stopping out at our booth, you'll see a new television commercial for a foundation we just launched. And the reason why that's going to be successful is because we actually went out to six countries and we measured the skin tone in those countries of almost 1,000 women. And what that allowed us to do was that allowed us to plot very scientifically all the different areas of skin tones in each of those countries. When we did that, what we found was that we looked at it three-dimensionally. And in order to better match skin tone, and, and skin, skin colors are matched with yellow, red, blue, black. It's fairly simple. And you can get any skin tone with those four different pigments. But what we were missing was blue, which was very new and, and different. We never use blue in foundation. But this research allowed us to identify that, in fact, blue pigment got us closer to a woman's natural skin tone, which was our scientific aha, and it's what got us to this new ideal flawless technology, which hopefully if you stop by, you'll see it on the booth. But that's the type of work we do in understanding the consumer. It's what helps us drive our product development. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how we innovate. <clears throat> so as I mentioned to you, we have a consumer tension, right? So the example I'll talk through is our, ult our ultra matte lipstick. So what we know is that extreme finishes are a very important trend. And we know that she wants a matte finish. But we also know that matte lipsticks are drying. The reason why they're drying is because typically the way you formulate a matte lipstick is you take a lipstick and you put a ton of powders in it and that's what gets its matte finish. But it doesn't give the consumer an enhanced experience. So what we did was we took that scientific hypothesis and we started to look at the competitive references across multiple countries. United States, Brazil, Russia are our key markets. And so what we did was we found that in fact the maddest lipsticks were very uncomfortable, and the matte lipsticks that were actually comfortable weren't really matte. We asked the consumer, she didn't even think they were matte. So we had a scientific hypothesis, and what that did was it allowed us to find a white space. And what a white space is, is actually a new, that's, that's when you have your new benefit space. That's what's really exciting. So we found this new benefit space. Now what we had to do was figure out how to actually deliver to that benefit space. So then you say, OK, where am I going to find technology to deliver this? You know, nobody else is doing it. How am I going to do it? And that's where you start to do your research. And you, you go to those adjacent industries. And what we did was we took a very unique approach here. And again, instead of just throwing powders into a shiny lipstick, we thought, what if we can find all matte ingredients? And typically in cosmetics, especially in lipsticks. When you're looking for moisture, it's always shiny. It's just the way it is. Um, so we went out and we sought out technology for every single component of a lipstick, fillers, waxes, emollients, and they were matte from the ground up. So it was a very unique approach to, um, to developing a matte lipstick. And that's how we successfully were able to deliver on the comfort. And you can see some of our brochure executions, which really help to articulate that to our representative and consumer. The split lip, where you have one side matte, one side, the other side is actually a matte lipstick. Believe it or not, it doesn't look matte compared to ours, but that's one of the matte lipsticks that, that was comfortable. So it was a very unique approach to deliver on that technology benefit. Another important piece of our developments is, is making sure that we can actually talk about it to our representative and consumer. And we call those demos or demonstrations. And 
It's really important because in this very complex environment of cosmetics, how do you set yourself apart from the rest of the world? So it's critical that we are able to do that. And oftentimes what we do in the lab is we'll develop it and then we'll give it to creative and we'll bring it to life in a, in a meaningful way for our, for our representative and for our customer. So what I'm going to show you now is I'm actually going to show you a, a demonstration which, which brings this to life to show the superiority of the technology we used versus the competitive technology. So what you'll see is you'll see our lipstick on a tissue, that's a tissue, two swipes, and then the competition is next. So there you go. So that's really, and this is Emily. She is one of the chemists that works on this. She's very proud of it, so she likes to be in our videos. Um, you know, this is, this is really what sets, sets it apart. And you could really see, you know, we, we call that brick to forehead, uh, which means very obvious. Um, it's, it's a way to, um, to show things. And, and same with that split lip. And it's really how we can, we can stand to stand apart from the rest of the, uh, the competition. So, I talked to you a bit about technology, and you know, hopefully you see we take a very unique approach. It's, it's critical to do that, um, to innovate. Um, you can't do the same old, same old. You need to, you need to think differently. Um, you know, as part of this, it's important you have the right skill sets. We have a very talented group of, of product designers. Um, we, we have a unique group who actually, you know, we, we don't call ourselves inventors anymore, we call ourselves innovators. And as part of that, what you need to do is really look at it holistically. So for that matte lipstick, what was really important and unique, other than the fact that it did everything I just told you about, was that we also built a matte lipstick case, right? So when the consumer gets it, the first thing she says is, oh, this must be a matte lipstick. And then she rolls it up, and we also made the bullet, the actual lipstick bullet matte, which is very different. Nobody does that. So it's called holistic product design. So from the start to the finish, everything that's part of that development really speaks to the mattity. And of course, you know, it's very important to protect your invention. So, um, you know, Avon does have over 750 patents worldwide in the last 20 years alone. It's critical. Uh, and again, it helps you to really believe that there is true science in, uh, in making cosmetics, whether they be skincare or, or color cosmetics. So another really important uh, aspect is, is the packaging and, you know, the capabilities to really drive package development. And, you know, design is an important aspect of it, but it's really complex to make a complex package. And what this is, is um, an example of how we use 3D printing uh, to help us drive, you know, our packaging technology. We had a very interesting concept. You may have seen it on TV. I'm actually going to show you the commercial here where it was called Attraction. It was a fragrance. And the fragrances were designed together. They had very unique accords that attracted each other. And as part of this, we wanted to show that in the package. And this package had to fit together perfectly, which is very difficult. So we were able to design this using 3D printing technology that really helped us drive the development of this and bring lots of efficiencies into, into the program. Um, so again, 3D printing technology is something that we use now on an everyday basis, which really helps us to um, even make new shapes and lipstick bullets, pressed powder designs, but more importantly, something like this was, was really helping us to bring this to market quicker. Um, Avon is is innovative in many ways, and obviously technology is one, but also in the way we, um, we address things socially. And Brazil, impressively for me, is, is very bold when it comes to doing that. So this commercial is actually an example of that. It, it talks about attraction, but it also um, brings, you know, brings to the forefront um, gender neutrality, which is very interesting, and um, I think it, it, went, it went over quite well in, uh, in Brazil, so I'm going to share that with you guys right now.
very relevant um, commercial here, and again, it's done, done, done very well. And I think, again, I, I like to think of Avon as very innovative across all aspects. Um, so I'm here to tell you also, super exciting, that we are continuing to build our capabilities here in Brazil. We do have R&D other than in New York, where I'm based out of, in China, South Africa, Poland, um, Mexico, Argentina, but Brazil, uh, we are continuing to build capabilities in, in Brazil, which is really exciting. And, you know, I think, you know, as a, a, special, a special announcement, you know, today, I'm sharing with you that we're actually opening up a new R&D lab this week in Brazil, uh, product development lab, and we're really excited about it. Um, we, we have now 45 uh, people in innovation in, in Brazil and over 100 in R&D, which is pretty impressive. And it just goes to show what an important market Brazil is to Avon. And um, we want to continue to increase our presence. We actually even have 3D printer in Brazil. Um, we have trend experts, package experts, formula experts. It's really um, quite impressive. And it's really important for us to make sure we have people here to help us drive the capabilities, ensuring also that what we develop is very relevant to the Brazilian consumer and the Brazilian market. There's nothing like having people on the ground. So what is our promise? This is what we call our Avon Beauty Circle. Three things, self-reliance and an earnings opportunity, and that's really where we also need to continue to innovate, empowering women and empowering others. We have Beauty for a Purpose. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but it is a very important campaign uh, on how, how we continue to empower women by making them feel beautiful. And then, of course, it's my job to make sure that we have products of demonstrable quality and value. And, you know, that's really, that means we need to be competitive. I heard a lot of people talk here about how important it is to be competitive, to make sure that we keep, you know, keep our innovation growing. Obviously, we need to have beautiful aesthetics and beautiful properties in our product. Make sure that we have very strong local representative and consumer communication a very much an ownable point of difference and safety. I didn't talk about that, but safety is, you know, it's non-negotiable at Avon. It is number one, it is the single most important thing that matters to us, to our consumers. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about our history. You know, Avon, I don't know if you, you all know this, but we're 131 years old, which is pretty awesome. We've been around for a while and the picture on the left uh, is our first R&D facility in Suffern, New York. The picture, well, I don't know if I have my left and right right, but the present picture is the building that I work in now. Uh, it's a state-of-the-art facility, and what's really cool about it is that it's on the same exact site as our original um, facility. And again, we're pretty proud of that because heritage is, is really important to us here at Avon. And we continue to reinvent ourselves, and, and this facility allows us to do that. And now our, our new lab in Brazil is really going to help, help us continue to build those capabilities. We have a very strong um, pipeline uh, of, of history for innovation. Um, some of the products I talked a little bit about, Lotus Shield, um, we, we have many industry firsts. In skincare, we have a product launching in the UK in the next couple of months uh, first, and then it will come to Brazil, which is going to revolutionize the skincare industry, in my opinion. We were the first ones to come out with a, uh, a mascara brush that actually bent. Now you see that all over the place. So lots of this you could look at and say, oh, I've seen that product. But if you look at the date, you'll see that Avon was actually the first. So we were very proud of our industry first. Very strong history of innovation. And so I hope that today um, all the puzzle pieces fit together. And I've shared a little bit about how we innovate at Avon, and I hope you now know that a lipstick is much more than a lipstick. As a matter of fact, besides all the great things that I talked about, um, a funny story, when I started as a lipstick chemist, I made my first lipstick, and one of the engineers came up to me, and he picked up the lipstick, and he threw it against the wall. And I nearly cried. I said, what are you doing to my lipstick? And he said, 
Lisa, if, if that lipstick doesn't survive me throwing it against the wall, it's not going to survive our harsh distribution channels. And I thought, oh my goodness, how am I supposed to make a beautiful lipstick that actually you can throw against the wall? But those are the sorts of challenges that we have um, in R&D. So. And what I'm going to leave you with is a, a video that will make you think, hopefully. And as I mentioned, um, you know, we, we're not just innovators in product, we're innovators in in making people think differently socially. And this video that I'm gonna share with you is um, a little bit about empowering our next generation of women and um, thinking about how we want to um, maybe raise our daughters a little differently. So enjoy this, it's a short video. Pretty. Hmm, pretty. Definitely pretty. She's my friend, sir. He's extremely bright. My boy's fearless. Tough and adventurous. Adventurous. Wow. I had no idea I was doing that. Well-meaning parents are trying to praise their children, particularly their girl children, and tell them they're pretty and so on. And really this is probably not a good idea because this again focuses the importance of appearance. It doesn't really matter whether it's positive or negative, it's saying that appearance is pretty important. So it would be useful, particularly with girls, if parents could really conscientiously make their praise and commentary on what the, the girls do more than what they look like. Avon believes every girl deserves to reach her potential. So we're launching a worldwide campaign to change the way parents praise their daughters. To tell girls that they are smart and brave and curious and capable of anything. To give them truly positive praise. The campaign launches in Brazil, where we're working with academics, researchers, child psychologists and data analysts to identify the most popular words used to praise boys and girls. The integrated campaign launches with a viral film to expose the problem and inspire parents to join the Careless Words Project, making a pledge to give girls positive praise. We create Twin Speak, a full-length documentary that exposes how parents of mixed-gender twins give their kids unequal praise, even though they're the same age and raised in the same home. Influencers, activists, feminists and female celebrities will come on board to spread the word. And we'll enlist influential teenage YouTubers to show their audiences the power of praising girls. An interactive dictionary provides endless words to choose from and our template lets parents post a powerful image of their daughter with a word of praise for her. They can upload it as their Facebook profile and opt in to see an amazing image of their daughter appear on a giant digital billboard. Our Avon representatives become campaign advocates, speaking to mums in their homes, and getting them to make the pledge to praise their daughters for being more than pretty. In just 12 weeks, we want to change the language of praise to help empower a generation of girls across the country and then across the world. Because Avon believes empowered girls become empowered women. And empowered women make the world more beautiful for everyone. hope you enjoyed the presentation um, and I hope you'll think about that a little bit and I just want to thank you all for coming. Obrigada. I appreciate it and again, it was nice to meet you all.